Action-packed movie is coming. It's Sylvester Stallone's latest work, Samaritan. This time, the 76-year-old Hollywood tough guy will play an aging superhero. As the top action hero, can he still push beyond his limits and deliver an exciting performance for the audience? No need for too much talk. Just watch and you'll see. Many years ago, there were twins in Granite City who were born with a mysterious power that unintentionally harmed those around them. The townspeople feared their power and burned down their house, killing their parents in the process. But the boys survived and scathed. As time passed, their fates took different paths. Jack became a heroic vigilante, while his brother Chris burned with a desire for revenge. He wanted everyone to feel the pain their parents had experienced. To rebel against his brother, Chris crafted a hammer of revenge and used innocent lives to lure Jack into a deadly fight. The brothers battled it out at a power plant until they both disappeared in a blaze of fire. Decades have passed since then, and the town has returned to peace. The legend of the twins has faded away, but Ross, a boy from the town, has always believed that Jack is still alive and will one day return to save the world. With the rising crime rate, the city is on the edge of chaos. One day, Ross is beaten up by a group of thugs while a hat-wearing old man suddenly appears. The scruffy-haired boy is not convinced and tries to stab the old man, but... Ross realizes something and goes home to spy on the old man through a telescope. He is shocked to see the old man's back covered in burn scars. Could this junk collector neighbor be the hero Jack from years ago? What happens to superheroes when they get old? Sylvester Stallone gives us the answer in Samaritan. Ever since Ross was rescued last time, he firmly believed that his old neighbor, Jack, was the legendary superhero Samaritan. Sneaking into Jack's house, he found notes about Samaritan in his closet. Meanwhile, Morris, the leader of a gang at the scrapyard, started investigating as well. He was a violent fanatic and also Chris's biggest fan. In order to obtain the hammer Chris made, Morris posed as a policeman and strolled into the power plant. In an instant, the power plant's security system was destroyed, and all the possessions, including the hammer, fell into Morris's hands. Morris swung the hammer once and Jack, who was far away at home, felt a connection and realized his notebook was missing. He went to Ross to retrieve it but was stopped by a persistent little boy who kept asking if he was Samaritan, and how else would his notebook contain such things. Annoyed, he reluctantly admitted to being a fan of Samaritan too, but as he was about to leave, boy with dreadlocks drove up and knocked him down with his car. To his surprise, Jack struggled to get up and after a hot shower at home, he looked completely fine. Meanwhile, Morris, holding the hammer of revenge, assembled the forces of evil and planned to wreak havoc in the city in Chris's name. He planted a bomb in the power plant and even killed the responsible policeman. All of this was discovered by Ross, who had been secretly following him. He found Jack and hoped he could stand up and take responsibility, saving the city from destruction. However, Jack was determined to return to his normal life and refused Ross's request. But seeing him being bullied by the gangsters time and time again, he felt extremely reluctant. Little did he know, his enemies had already set their sights on him. A group of daring young men had the audacity to attempt to besiege Sylvester Stallone. Why don't you just show me? No problem. Jack, with a flick of his finger, sent the henchmen sprawling on the ground with missing teeth. Fly. The fool didn't believe it and was rescued by a little girl who had witnessed the incident and appeared on the news. The news of Samaritan's reappearance quickly spread throughout the streets. Upon seeing the news, Morris immediately headed to Jack's home with his henchmen. Luckily, Jack had anticipated this and left the night before they arrived. Furious, Morris shifted his focus to Ross, whom Jack had saved multiple times. Despite his mother's valiant efforts to protect him, Morris kidnapped Ross. When Jack arrived, he saw the mask on the table and immediately understood Morris's intentions. He rushed to the power plant where Morris was installing a bomb, and his henchmen attempted to intercept him along the way. To their surprise, the elderly Jack was still a force to be reckoned with. As he plowed through them with his armored car, the fight was on, and Jack made quick work of Morris's underlings. Morris appeared, holding Ross hostage and with a large hammer in his hand. He hit Jack with the hammer, sending him flying. As Morris approached to deliver the fatal blow, he was suddenly interrupted. Now you know our nemesis felt. No one comes to save you, good guy. I'm not the good guy. I'm the bad guy. 
In an instant, the bomb inside the power plant detonated prematurely, and the hammer was back in Jack's hand. Everyone was stunned to learn that Jack wasn't Samaritan but rather the villainous Chris, who had donned his brother's mask after he died in a fiery accident. Jack, who had awakened from his slumber, broke through the defense, fighting his way through the horde of enemies. J Just as he was about to rescue Ross, Morris appeared and kicked him into the flames. As Jack struggled to hang on, Ross pulled out a steel pipe and helped him escape. Ro Ross couldn't believe it when he realized that the old man who had rescued him multiple times was actually the infamous villain from years ago. However, Jack- Good and bad live in everybody's heart. And it's gonna be up to you to make the right choice. Search and rescue team arrived, and the only survivor, Ross, was escorted out of the flames by a shadowy figure. Reporters swarmed Ross, asking him the hero's name. Ross thought for a moment before smiling and saying, Sam Samaritan came right through the flames and helped me. That was Samaritan! Yeah.